In this video, we're gonna look at how to make shapes like this mushroom you can see here. Now to do this, we're gonna go into our top view to start with. So I don't need the grid turned on, so if you have the grid showing, you can go into filter here and just turn that off with the grid. You don't need that, that might actually get in your way. Now, the thing to remember, let's just go into perspective view here. I'm just going to draw a very quick spline just in a front view, and I'm just gonna add a few points. So I'm just going to do a very rough outline of the mushroom and what I want to talk about really is the fact that when you're using one of the loft nerves it goes along spline order so rather than taking the splines in height order you're actually doing the order that the splines are in the hierarchy and that's an important thing to bear in mind because if you want to have an overhang you need to have spline one, two, three, four, five, and then the ones that go back down. So six again there, that's the sixth spline, would be six in the order in your hierarchy rather than one, two, three, four. So it wouldn't be the fourth. And I just thought I'd show that now, and then as we go into actually creating our mushroom, you'll see how that works out. So we start from the bottom and we'll work our way up. You could do it the other way around, but you just have to then reverse the order of your splines. So we'll start from the ground. And I'm going to take a B spline. I'm just going to add a few points. Now I want this to be reasonably circular, but not too much. And I'm just going to check close spline because I want this to be one complete object. Hit spacebar to drop the tool. And you can see here, let's just drop that selection as well. You can see this is our base spline and this is sitting on the ground plane. I'm just going to hit Alt and D to bring back my axis tool. So when you see me starting to do things, you'll see that I have an axis showing like so rather than just the spots okay so now we'll go back into our top view and we're going to make the next spline and as we draw it it will be on the ground plane but we can then lift that up so in the top view this one wants to be just a bit smaller than that first spline so go back into B spline in fact I'm going to take that palette and I'm just going to drop that down over here just so I can hit the command for it there rather than opening up that drop down the whole time Okay, so I want a B-spline. I'm going to do the same again, similar amount of points, in fact, exactly the same amount of points, so one, two, three, four, five, and then the last segment will join up as it did before. So spline is the base, spline one is my second spline, because everything in Cinema 4D starts on a non-numbered version, like so. So I've got my spline tool. Now I want to add the next one, which will be thinner again, and you can see that I'm keeping these reasonably regular, but not hugely so. But I can go back if I want to in point mode with my life selection tool and I can change these. And this is one of the joys of using the loft nabes is it really lets you get in there afterwards and adjust things without too much trouble. I'm actually going to go back to this second spline, just round that off just a little bit. Okay, now I want to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go back into my perspective view and in object mode, I'm going to take my spline one and my spline two, just lift them up. My spline two, which is going to be the uppermost one of the stalk, will go to there. Now what I want to do is I want to actually define some of the area between the stalk and underside of the cap of the mushroom. So I'm going to go back into my top view and I'm going to make a spline now, which is quite similar in position to the top of the stem and I'm going to give this just a few more points to play with just to really get in there and get the points where I want them and you'll see why that will help in a second because the next spline I draw is going to have more points so this is the transitional spline and now I'm going to do the one which you'll see is going to have much more geometry and this is going to be the start of the, I guess they're called frills or gills or something, I can't remember exactly. But this is where you see the ridges underneath the toadstool. So that's going to be like this. And now what I want to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this spline. Like so. I'm going to go into object mode. And I hit T. I'm just going to enlarge that right out to there. Now I'm going to go back in point mode. And I'm going to start adjusting some of these with the move tool and I'm going to basically I'm going to select them all and I'm going to right click in my viewport so you can either 
just bevel those points out or you could champ for them to round them you could do all sorts of different things what i want to do is actually subdivide and that's just created extra divisions for me and um, without me having to go in with a knife tool so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select every other point holding down the shift key just go around that spline selecting every other point and then i'm going to scale them inwards just to create some variation which will form the starts of the gills now you can see i've got some smoothness at certain points all the way around the transition between the two but because i've got every other point selected i can go in if you wanted to you could use the the, the chamfer tools to to round these off even more or you could line them up split them do whatever you want so just kind of get them to the point you want them I'm quite happy with these here. I like this. It's reasonably regimented, but there is a little bit of randomness in there. Um, I'm going to do something very similar for the outside spline. So I'm going to select them all, right click, and I'm going to go down to subdivide. And then you want to do the same again, selecting every other point. Now, I want to take that point there, which is going to line up reasonably well. This should then allow me to scale these like so T key bring them in like so and I'm happy with that so this should be the the, the frilly bits underneath done uh, I'm going to take my B spline and now start the edge of the cap and this can be just a bit rounder again I don't need quite so many divisions I just want to have this reasonably round like so now let's go back in and start placing some of these splines so let's take those ones and lift them up now I'm going to do this in the perspective view so I can line up that first frilly part just below the level of the top of the stalk then I'm going to take spline five and six and I'm going to lower these down like so I'm going to take the sixth one lower that just a bit again and now I can go back into my top view and continue drawing my splines I need to do another one which is fairly close to the inner cap there I'm just going to go into object mode and enlarge that spline just a bit I think so it's encompassing everything else and I'll probably need to lift this up to around there I think that's good now bear in mind that this is going in spline order not height order so if we go into our side view even though we've got spline 7 which is the top of the hierarchy selected it doesn't mean it's highest up in the shape of things this is actually two-thirds of the way up even though it's top of the hierarchy and that's the important thing to remember when you're dealing with lathe nerves okay so I'm just going to go for a final spline roughly circular like so which will be the top of our mushroom uh, you could add another tiny one if you really wanted to I'm just going to probably select this one and shrink it down and then I'll lift it right up to the top of our mushroom which will be about there and now I can add all of these into our NURBS so you want to open up the NURBS palette and choose a loft NURB take all of these and drop them into that loft NURB and then if we go into our perspective view let's just drop that now you can see this is looking a bit funky at the moment and this is where we have to go in and just make sure that everything's where we want it so we can go into our side view and start adjusting these so let's take a couple of these splines lift them up and make sure that they're all running in the right direction and what you can see going on here is a prime example of not starting your splines in the same place and to remedy this we need to go into point mode and what you're looking for here is the start end point of your spline and this is where it changes from white to blue so we'll take this point here which is along the z-axis as our start end point for all of our splines and let's just make sure that everything is as it should be this one's reasonably close I'm actually going to rotate it just a bit and you can see the lathe nerve lines moving with this just lining things up 
Now, if you can't see what's going on with the lines, just go into your point mode and you'll see that spline turning up again. Okay, so I need to rotate this just a bit there. Spline four. Again, we need to rotate this just a little. Now I am actually going to go back and rotate some of these afterwards just to get some extra definition where I want it. And I like to have a bit of that organic twist, which you'll see happen afterwards. Okay, so we can see that the point here, this is actually possibly backwards. So we want to take this spline and you can either rotate it over itself, uh, which might be a good way of doing it. Let's try that. So just rotate that over in the banking axis and then we should go into the top view and check the point order not quite in the right place yet but it's getting there okay so you can see now that these lines are actually starting to line up a little bit better and you can see that the start point is here not far from the z-axis which is what we want uh, this one here I think we could possibly rotate just around a little bit and the eighth spline which is our final spline we need to zoom in and just see okay that's in the right position there and you can see this is starting to form something which is slightly more what we wanted now we could have just started with a cube and then done some extrusions or we could have gone into front view we could have drawn out this path using a spline and then just dropped it into a lot of nerves but we have some extra power here we could take our splines here for the cap and we could actually just tilt the cap over uh, which you can't do with a lathe and it would take more work with some of the other tools but you can actually just tip it like so and it doesn't break the nerves at all and then we could lift that up and you can bring this right up like this or you could drop it down you could rotate it down uh, we need to take the top one just bring that up as well we could even lower some of the other points um, we need to go in and fix this area here but that's fine we can go in there take that spline which will be number three lift that up because that one was still sitting on the ground plane and now you can see what's starting to take place is much more what we were looking for and now we can also go in and we can take some of these points and you can see this is the one where we wanted to transition to have a bit more detail underneath so we could take that and we could draw it down or we could lift it up and you can see we're starting to get some of these deformities and if I go to display and show the with lines you can see how this is working out and you can see that there's a some depth and some changes there where we've got the kind of frilly section now what I particularly like about using these is that you can go in to any particular spline you want and you can adjust it so I can make that stem thinner if I wanted to I could twist it around and give some detail I'll take the one underneath it and twist that too maybe the other way and you get some really just lovely organic shapes going on and you can do it just very free flow exactly how you want now if I wanted to have some kind of ribbing going up along the stem to match some of the detail that you might have underneath the caps there you could do that too you could take your first spline let's go into top view let's go into point mode and let's subdivide all these points here so right click subdivide and then you could just use your live selection tool take a couple of these points uh, I'll go for every other one again just because that's a method that works quite well and then I'm going to go back into my perspective view so I can see live in the viewport what I'm doing and I can drag those in I could do something similar for the next spline up and this is where you can really start adding detail uh, and it's such a, a fun way of working and go back to live selection just take a couple of splines along here or points along the spline even and then you can see live in the viewport what we're doing so you could either bring them out you could just bring them in for some kind of ribbing you could even rotate those separate from the other ones which is quite a useful tool as well and if you wanted to really go in and show off some deeper frills and recesses here you could do that using the same method uh, so that would be using this spline here and because we just didn't drop the selection of the points 
we kept that intact in that spline, we can actually go ahead and we can use that selection now. And the same again, when I go to spline 5, those points should still be selected. Uh, and I can now grab the Y axis, I can drag them down or up. Up might be better in this case. Now I'll go to spline 5. I don't think they're selected anymore, but that's okay. I'm going to take all of the inner spline or in spline points along here. Just make sure you're in live selection, and you can just click and drag with shift held down to select those inner points. Go back into your perspective view, and then you can either lift or lower as you see fit. And there you go, we can see we've got some nice detail in there. Now it's also worth just popping into the loft nerves settings themselves because you can go for an organic form and if you watch in the viewport as I click this now you can see this has just helped just a little just to make this it just adapts the way that the interaction between the spline points works and that helps to give you some more detail and just to kind of smooth it smooths out the fong angle as well I believe which does help now you can add caps or remove caps so if you don't want a mess under here you can turn off the caps on top and bottom so I don't really want one on the bottom it's not necessary we'll go for a cap on top just so I don't have a hole like so now you could round this off if you wanted or you could reduce the size of that final spline let's go into object mode and just reduce the size of that and I think that's perfect Okay, so that's how you can use loft nerves to do something more than just a, a random spline shape. And you can use this for trees, all sorts of things. Just anything organic which has kind of this structure that works up over itself, but you want to have more control than you would with a, a lathe spline.